Hello, I'm Rajesh Bhaskaran from Cornell University. In this module, I'm going to show you how to solve a classical solid mechanics problem, plate with a hole subjected to tension using the finite element method with ANSWER software. And I'll use the same solution process as for conduction, as for laminar pipe flow, and other modules that I have, which you might have gone through. It's very interesting that you can use the same solution process for all these different problems from different areas of engineering. When I was an undergrad, way back when, my daughter thinks it was a million years ago, I assure you it wasn't that far back, I had a very fragmented view of engineering analysis. I thought solid mechanics was its own thing, fluid mechanics was its own thing, heat transfer, dynamics, and so on. And over the years, I've been able to make connections across all these different areas, and I realized that they are really variations on, on, uh, on similar themes. And so by using the same solution process across all these different problems, I hope you're able to make the, those same kind of connections, and in the process, you're beginning to think like an expert. I'll go to my slide to review the, the problem statement. So we're given a, a plate um, with a hole, and we're given you know the length of the plate, the width of the plate, um, the diameter of the hole, and it's subjected to, to some uh, force. And the dimensions are given over here. Um, we're given the material is A514 steel. So, you know, this is the Young's modulus. This is the Poisson ratio. And we are also given the load in terms of, you know, units of uh, force per unit area. So it's 20,000 PSI. And we would like to determine displacement, strain, and stress components using ANSYS. Um, and we would also like to verify and validate the results uh, to make sure how good our results are. Verify and validate have uh, specific meanings which are different, and I will get into that in the verification validation step. Now, ANSYS, like any general purpose finite element software, is a black box. And um, we'll use a black box to solve a physical problem, plate with a hole. And we'll go into the black box, and we'll give it some user inputs. Um, and we'll turn the crank and get color pictures and other results. Of course, if we don't know what's inside the black box, this looks like garbage in. Turn the crank garbage out, as I've mentioned in, in other contexts. Um, so we need to know the major elements of what's inside the black box. Based on the user inputs, the uh, software figures out what is the mathematical model we want to solve. So it's not solving the physical problem, it's solving a mathematical model of the physical problem. And the mathematical model is constructed from the physical problem based on some physical principles and assumptions which we need to be aware of. The main, one of the major misconceptions you know, I see with students is that they think ANSYS is solving the physical problem. No, it's solving a mathematical model of the physical problem. And it is solving that mathematical model using a numerical solution technique, in this case, um, the finite element method. And that numerical solution gives you displacements at selected points. And we'll see what the selected points are. So it's not going to calculate everything everywhere. It calculates selected variables, displacements in this case, at selected points. And once we have the displacements at uh, the selected points, we can construct everything else, the strain, the stresses, um, through post-processing. So everything we do in ANSYS is going to affect the mathematical model, the numerical solution, um, or post-processing. And, you know, I will uh, point out which aspects we are affecting as we are going through um, setting up the problem and solving it in ANSYS. And, of course, we can take a look at the physical problem and make some hand calculations uh, based on approximating the mathematical model or an analytical solution to the mathematical model. So I'll review what those hand calculations are. And then, um, in this case, we also have experimental data. You can find experimental data from others in, in tabulated in textbooks. And in the Cornell course and for which I'm developing this module, students have experimental data from digital image correlation. So before we get into the black box, let's do the usual pre-analysis. The first thing we will do is review the mathematical model and what are the physical principles and assumptions on which it's based. Um, the second thing we'll think about is what is the numerical solution strategy used 
um, what are the errors introduced by the finite element uh, method and how do we minimize those errors and then the third thing we'll think about is what kind of hand calculations we can do to predict expected results and I'll start with the mathematical model that's coming up next.